Is this better? There we go. <laughs> I'll just repeat that. Item one was approval of the June 4th, 2014 minutes of the regular meeting. Item two was plats. Item three is a 2014-06-03 rezone from AG Agricultural District to RS Single Family Residential Suburban for allowed forms located east and west of North Marlowe Avenue and north of East Fairway Drive. Item four. 2014-06-04, rezoned from RS Single Family Residential Suburban to RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential Suburban for allowed forms located at the northwest corner of South Purdue Avenue and West Lobiella Street. Item 5, 2014-06-06, rezoned from AG Agricultural District to the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar, C3 Commercial Community, O Office, RA3 Apartment Residential High Density, and RD2 Townhome Residential Suburban Districts for allowed forms located at the southeast corner of West 85th and South Tallgrass, Tallgrass Avenue. Item 6, 2014-06-07 rezone from C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar and RA2 apartment residential moderate density to C3 commercial community, RA3 apartment residential high density, and RD2 townhome residential suburban for allowed forms located at the southwest corner of East 57th Street and South Sycamore Avenue. Item seven, 2014-06-01 preliminary subdivision plan for Dolly Farm Edition located at the northwest corner of East 26th Street and South Dakota Highway 100 and the southwest corner of East 12th Street and South Dakota Highway 100. Item 8, 2014-06-10 preliminary subdivision plan for Canterbury Heights North Edition Phase 2 located at North Cactus Drive. All right, thank you, Denise. Um, are there any items on the consent agenda that the audience has any op opposition to? All right, come forward. Please state your name and address. Uh, Gary Hyatt. Gary Hyatt, North Marker Drive, Sioux Falls. Uh, we object to item three and item eight. We'd like item number three and item number eight moved to the regular agenda? Yes, please. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? All right, seeing none, are there any comments from the commissioners on any items on the consent agenda? All right, I'd move to see a motion to approve the consent agenda with items number three and eight moved to the regular agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right, the consent agenda passes. Let's move on to the regular agenda. And we need a motion to approve the regular agenda. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right, the regular agenda has been approved. Item three is a 2014-06-03 rezone from AG Agricultural District to RS Single Family Residential Suburban for loud forms located east and west of North Marlowe Avenue and north of East Fairway Drive. Hi, Diane DeCoyer with the planning staff. Um, the project before you is a rezone for Canterbury Heights. The applicant is Scott Gilbert. The owner is Scott Gilbert. I think Pat Beckman is also here in support of the owner. The request is a rezone from agricultural to RS, single family residential suburban for allowed forms um, to construct single family residential in this case. Uh, the general location is west of Cactus Drive and north of East Fairway Drive. Um, the area is approximately 26 acres, and the developer is proposing about 17 lots in this development. 
The proposed RS zoning district is in compliance with the Shape Sioux Falls comprehensive plan. Further proper land use transition will exist from the existing RS single family suburban district to the east um, and to the south of this. Because the subject application is consistent with the Shape Sioux Falls comprehensive plan, the staff recommends approval for this rezoning. And I can't answer any questions you might have. Commissioners, do you have any questions for staff? All right, seeing none, thank you. If the applicant could please come forward and state your name and address. Pat Beckman, uh, 1601 East 69th Street, Sioux Falls. Do we got 26 acres and 17 lots. There are three quarters of an acre to like four acres. That's about it. Okay, all right. Any questions for Pat, commissioners? All right, seeing none, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to come forward and talk about this item? Bob Getz, 43 North Cactus Drive, Sioux Falls. Um, part of our, our concern uh, with this property, and, and we'd met with Pat Beck, or I hadn't met with Pat Beckman last night, but part of our association had, we had concerns relative to access to the private drive or the private roads through uh, Cactus Drive. And uh, uh, there was a secondary access that uh, we had visited, or they'd visited with about last night in regards to how they may be able to access uh, Cactus Drive. Um, you know, one of the, uh, I guess, one of the issues that we had was, you know, adjacent uh, uh, land use and zoning. Um, and and I, I want to address that on one of the later topics, but for right now, I think in, in regards to this property, um, you know, we, we're concerned with how it may have access, and maybe Pat can explain that, as to how it may have access through uh, Cactus Heights. Okay. Yeah. Uh, commissioners, do you have any questions for Bob? Bob, before you sit down. Bob, Bob, could you come back up for a second? Y your concern is how they're going to get access to this development through Cactus Heights? Uh, as it was explained to uh, uh, some of our association members last night, they were going to build a, a secondary access road uh, where North Cactus Drive ends and then would, uh, uh, I believe, tie into, uh, I think it's... Uh, <coughs> if I'm reading it right, Marlowe Circle. And the, the concern was that that uh, where we have a uh, basically a private road that uh, we'd have additional traffic coming down through our road, which is basically 12 feet wide, single lane paved road. Okay, the, the association owns this private road. Could you not put a barricade up on the end of that road to keep them from accessing that road if that the, yeah, the end of the road wouldn't be wouldn't be on ours, and I guess uh, as a, as an association, we wanted to find out or, or determine oh. what 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 they may be able to do or can do to control the traffic. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Thank you, uh, Pat. Do you want? Can you address that? <clears throat> have... The reason for the road for this little road coming from uh, the north down to Cactus Drive was the city required it at the fire department. I just assumed not have to do it, but it was required by the city. And uh, we would use that area as access to our other development, which we are proposing, which is on the north side of Cactus Drive for construction equipment also. But the, city, the only reason it's there is the city is requiring it. And then the, some of the Members of the association wanted a second way out of this area because they're talking about how steep the roads are. So I'm at kind of a quandary as to what to do. Pat, I'm confused here. Do you need access on their private road to get to your development? Not to this one. Okay. But the city, like I said, the city wants a driveway for emergencies to have a, another way into this project or out basically out of the project I think is what they really want okay thank you any other questions 
All right, is there anyone else from the audience that would like to comment on this item? <clears throat> Gary Hyatt, 30 North Marker. This new zoning will be the same as our existing family homes that are to the east, but will direct traffic to a lower density area. Our rural residential county driveway with maintenance and snow removal handled by our HOA. This property was annexed by the city and is shown here, directs traffic to both city streets, Marlow Drive and our private driveway. The Cactus Heights driveway is by far the most direct route for these homeowners to get out. Uh, two thirds of which the road, the property of the road is owned uh, by Pat Beckman and one third of it is owned by the Peterson family. And there is yet another remaining amount to be dis disputed between another association in the city. The driveway not show, our, our road or driveway as we like to call it because it's 11 and a half feet wide. You cannot meet another vehicle. That's why we are disagreeing with this. All right. Thank any, you. Any Commissioners, any questions? Bob, I'm, I'm just... Gary. Gary. I'm confused. Him too. Your contention is, is they're going to have to use your private road or that people will? People will. Yeah. You know, if, if most of those people on that development right there have a choice of taking a windy route to get out to Madison through Canterbury Heights, or if they can s go one block to the west and have a straight shot down our road to get to uh, Madison, that's the way they're going to be. And our road is 11 and a half feet wide and is made like a roller coaster. We've had numerous accidents, rolled vehicles in the ditch. It's, it's you know, you don't live out there without a four wheel drive. It's a nice area, they're large lots, but the concern of the neighborhood is that access in and out of it. Access into our area instead of them creating another road that perhaps goes out to Powder House. I think that's what they're doing here. Are they not creating another road? No, the road they're creating goes to our existing 11 and a half foot wide road. And the other road, the, the other access point for them is taking uh, the windy route and getting out uh, through uh, Canterbury Heights, existing development. Have you talked to engineering or staff about what you can do with a private road or what you can't do? I think some of our people had. They could probably direct that better, that question better than myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to come forward? Please state your name and address. Cheryl Lostad, 39 North Cactus Place. And we keep using the term our road. And if you're curious, I have a picture of our road in good times and in bad. <laughs> so if it's appropriate to give them somehow to you so you can see them, sure. otherwise, OK. Thank you. Oh, all right, any questioners, questions? No, nope, seeing none, thank you. All right, if there's no one else in the audience that would like to make a, make a comment on this item number, I would. I'd like to talk to staff. Okay, staff, if you could please come forward. Yes. Diane, help us with private roads. Um, their private Lock road. this road off to keep the traffic from coming up and down it. it to With this secondary this. access, it is required for fire truck access, but it doesn't mean it has to be used by the residents to the east there. 
in this development that they're talking about. They can do things like put a chain across the road. The fire department can cut that chain in case there's an emergency um, to access the area that they need. But those are options that the developer and the neighbors can work out. Again, just as a reminder, this is a land use issue as a rezone. So that's what we're here for tonight. I want to be sure in my mind for land use, the people that buy lots up here can access it on a public road. And they will be able to not will necessarily have to use this private road to get to this development. They do not have to for this development for Canterbury. The access road that they're providing is required, as I said, for fire truck access. Okay. They can block that however they want to work that out to block it for access for emergency vehicles. Thank you. All right, any other questions for Diane? So it's the red lines that are shown on this uh, current image that is the access road that they're talking about that connects to the north end of Cactus? That connects right there to Cactus Drive all the way south. I think it actually um, meets Here. up with East Madison okay. to the south. Okay. Does the aerial include that? Uh, I think that's for cactus. So the red line there that Jason is indicating um, actually is act or cactus drive there, again, that goes all the way to the south. To the left is Cactus Heights, where a lot of these neighbors are from. To the right is the development for Canterbury that we're talking about for the rezone. Diane, um, where is the, what I am not seeing is where is the, the access to this, if it's not this, where is the other road going to be? Because It's also there at North Marlowe off. Avenue, if you look back at the site plan. You can see North Marlowe coming up from the south up to what is then east. Markon, Markon Street. I'm sorry, I can't quite read it. It's blurry, and my hearing is bad. <laughs> all right, so everything else then is just going down Marlow Drive then? Yeah, they all it's have access back. through okay. there, and the secondary access is, again, at Cactus Drive. All right. That's where I was confused. I, I wasn't figuring out yep. how else they were getting out of there, but it's North Marlow. Okay. All right, any other questions for Diane? All right, thanks, Diane. All right, I think we'll, we'll take one more comment from the audience and then we'll close it for discussion. I'm just trying, um, Mark Peterson, 48 North Mill Drive, trying to clarify this, my good friend, Mr. Dunlop here. Um, it doesn't, Cactus Drive does not go all the way to Madison. Cactus Drive becomes Dubuque at Clubview Drive. It is the most direct route out for those places. I'm not against them building houses there. I think it's a great spot. They've done a nice job developing it. But you throw in, you know, 18, 19 more houses down that narrow little road. And I think I'm the only person in this room that went down that road in the winter of 1978 and did a 360 in his brother's brand new pickup truck and then put it in the ditch with a snowplow on. So I know how bad it can be. But that's a private road. Mr. Beckman and his associates own north of Marker Place, just north of there, up to the top. We own the other part. We've paid taxes on it for 60 some years now and stuff. The association has rights of ingress and egress over both of them. But I can understand their concern because it comes the road where I come out of there, which is already, it's a very, very hilly road. And the, if the city is requiring them to have another access in there, they should go through another way other than a 11 and a half foot road because in addition to all these lots in this area, Mr. Beckman and his associates are asking for more lots to the west of there. So we're talking perhaps 30 or 40 more additional housing units, if my math is right, 
coming down this 11 and a half foot road that as that picture showed it gets very icy in the winter time but i just think that and plus the fact they would be going across our road which we have not given them a permission to go across the property that they bought in the cactus heights area from us some years ago they would have a right to but the southern part of it no they don't have a, a right to go across the roads that we own and we pay taxes and other people that live there do because they have ingress and egress but to this development here, no. I don't know why the city would say that's a secondary exit to go across somebody's private property where they don't have the right to do it, but that's the way city likes to do things. All stuff. right, I, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very your, much. Thank you for your comments. Jeff Schmidt, city planning. Um, just to clarify, this isn't a secondary public access. Okay, you guys have all heard these presentations at planning commission briefing when we have this every month. Fire requires a secondary fire emergency access. So everything you've heard up to this point is about gating it and putting a Knox box there and requiring secondary fire access. If you have more than 30 residential units in a subdivision with only one access point, and that being Marlowe, there needs to be a secondary fire access because if there's a fire at the entrance to Marlowe, and you can't get in and out of this subdivision, the fire trucks have to have a secondary egress. That's the only thing we're talking about here. It's not for the public to go south. There's more than 30 units here, and how does the fire trucks get in and out if there's a need? Not on a daily basis or on a 24-7, only on a needed basis. You put a gate on the end of that, fire trucks could get in, fire trucks could get out. Jeff, you're down 30. 19 lots here plus the existing Correct. houses that are already there. Correct. Yep. <clears throat> they are, they'd be within their right to gate that driveway. Right. I, I think what I'm hearing... Well, both prop Diane's already mentioned that. Again, we got to separate land use from your design standards. Pat Beckman could put a gate at the end of that, too, and just say it's a fire access. So, but that's not what your decision is here tonight. Your question was, is there access? Yes, Marlowe has access. We've already heard it's a good place for residential land use, um, but now those two property owners can decide. And again, Mr. Peterson brings up excellent points about his land and his rights. So now it's between those property owners what they want to do on the edge of that property. So the city is not involved in that decision-making process other than? Needing a secondary egress. Need a secondary access. Correct. Yep. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Thanks, Jeff. All right, no, I think we're closed for discussion, but, but thank you. No, I'm sorry, I think we're closed for discussion. Thank you. Um, now it's just time for commissioners to make a motion to approve and have discussion. I'll make a motion to approve item number three. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Well, as it relates to a rezone, we heard, I mean, clearly it makes sense to rezone this land to residential. Um, I, I think clearly this secondary access road, the role that the city plays in it, it is merely an access point. However, these neighbors want to work it out amongst themselves. Um, I don't think the city needs to be involved in that conversation. I think we should be, they should be able to figure it out. It's not a role for the city to play. I think what I hear is a concern of people taking the path of least resistance as far as coming to going. But I think what I've heard is it is a private road. There is some mechanisms they can use to that. It would only be used in case of an emergency. And I think, I don't know if that makes them feel comfortable or not, but there is a mechanism to do that. I, right. These appear to be 26 acres, 19 lots, big lots. I mean, it's a beautiful area up there. Residential, I think, is probably the correct zoning for it. Mm -hmm. um, I would agree. All right, and I think I'd just like to reiterate, we appreciate all the comments, but just remember we are an advisory land use board and that's what we are discussing in this item number is a rezone. Um, and so if there are no other comments, I think I would like a, we have a motion and a second to approve. So I guess all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right, motion passes. Item eight is a 2014-06-10 Preliminary Subdivision Plan for Canterbury Heights, North Edition, Phase 2, located at North Cactus Drive. Uh, Jason Bieber with the planning staff. 
Uh, this is a preliminary subdivision plan uh, presented by Pat Beckman uh, for the Canterbury Heights North Edition Phase 2. Uh, the applicant is proposing to subdivide uh, roughly 9.29 acres into six lots for future residential development, single family, or twin homes. Uh, the plan submitted is consistent with other lots within the existing uh, subdivision outside of city limits. Uh, utilities they will be uh, accessing water and sewer uh, running from the north from the uh, other uh, single family residential development that we just were talking about. Uh, roads, obviously this is a private drive and um, does meet our engineering standards for private drives. So we can move them forward with the preliminary plan. And because the preliminary subdivision plan application is complete, offers coordination of urban infrastructure, and does foster efficient and orderly urban growth, staff does recommend approval of this preliminary subdivision plan. All right, thanks Jason. Are there any questions for Jason? Madam Chair, Jason, did I hear you say that this does not meet standards for a private drive? No, it does meet the standards for a private drive. And as we've worked through this issue um, with the neighbors and with engineering, this in Chuck service, this does meet the criteria for private drive. There's nothing in our subdivision ordinance that prevents them from platting. Therefore, we're moving forward with the preliminary subdivision plan and recommending approval of it. So the only access in and out of these nine lots would be the private drive? It would be the private drive cactus. I think it's cactus drive or cactus place. And who owns the private drive? A portion of it north of... Um, North of, I think Noak Place is owned by the applicant, uh, Scott Gilbert, and, and Pat Beckman, I believe, is representing Scott Gilbert. And then south of that, I believe, as uh, Mr. Peterson said, was owned by the Peterson family and the Homeowners Association. Would the Beckman group need to get permission from the Petersons to use uh, their portion of the private road? And those kind of things, the covenants and the, the agreements between the two Party owners, like I said, is kind of something between them. We're looking at this as a subdivision ordinance. Does it make sense? Do they have their infrastructure, preliminary infrastructure? Can they go forward with development engineering? Can they plat it, which they can for this particular subdivision? So if we were to say yes, and Mr. Beckman and his group can't get permission to go on that private road, he would have to figure out another access in and out of this. Another way to get to that subdivision, yep. I think I'm starting to understand it, Jason. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jason. Any other questions? Oh, thanks, Jason. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address item number eight? Come on forward. Petition. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, is the applicant here? Please come forward. Sorry. Thanks, Pat. Pat Beckman, 1601 East 69th Street. Uh, there really isn't much to say about this. We had discussions with the group. That's kind of how the idea came about of creating, taking this access point that the city needed for the fire trucks, blacktopping it and making it a road to the north. Some of the homeowners thought that was a great idea for the winter. Some of them didn't want any access for the reasons that they have already stated. Also, in the deed where we bought the north half of Canterbury, it gives us permission to use that road all the way out to Dubuque, where the Dubuque ends and fairway, I think is what they call it, coming in. So we do have that permission in the original deed. All right. Thank you, Pat. Are there any questions from the commissioners? All right. Now, any comments from the audience on item number eight? Please come forward. Bob Getz, 43 North Cactus Drive. Um, our property is uh, right at the end of the road there. Uh, part of uh, our concern was uh, the limited roadside size. I know Pat has talked to us a little bit about some of the improvements that he may make, but with a you know private road, uh, as you'd heard, 12 foot wide, you know we're, we're concerned for traffic safety and uh, you know whether or not the road would be raised to some type of standards. Uh, relative to you know being able to meet traffic on the road, uh, being able to maintain the road, and then uh, also for snow removal and fire safety. So 
That, that was one of our concerns. Pat has given us some ideas uh, of what he may be able to do, but we haven't been able to, I guess, finalize uh, what we're agreeing to on that. But uh, that, that is our concern at this point is additional houses on a private road. Right. Commissioners, any questions for Bob? Bob, now, to Kenny's point from earlier, I'm starting to get confused. He has permission. Are you disputing that he has permission? No, no, I'm not. No, okay. no we, we're just mainly concerned on uh, as narrow as it is. We have some real blind spots in that road, and you know we feel that you know there's going to we need to make some kind of uh, improvements, or some improvements need to be made uh, to avoid you know head-on collisions. Or as you saw from some of the pictures, you know uh, when there's inclement weather, it's uh, it's really not accessible at times, and. Uh, you know, our concern is uh, snow removal, road repair, uh, emergency access uh, with additional homes. Currently, there's there's six homes up at the top of the hill, and with the additional lots, we're looking at potentially doubling that or or tripling the number of homes that are serviced by that same road. Okay, so, Bob. Uh, one more question, and maybe this will be one for someone else too that can answer this. But uh, you're maintaining the road, correct? That, that's correct. So when this is all said and done, they do their part up to your point, you still have to maintain the road that all of this traffic is coming on? Am I correct in that, saying that, that? That's our understanding, yes. So I guess liability factors, uh, if you don't get it plowed right and one of those people go off the road, it's your private road, uh, who's responsible? Um, maybe I'm getting way over on this, but uh, I just want to make sure that if you guys got to maintain this road and it's not maintained properly, who's liable? Because that's the only place that people can get out of that secondary site. He has access to it, so I mean, it'll be, yeah. Yeah, we strictly have access and then... Uh, the ability to build and maintain a road, but we do not own the land on which the roadway is built. That would be owned by Mr. Beckman and Petersons. Bob, has the association ever considered petitioning the city for a city street up there? We, we had met with the city several years ago about uh, the potential to be annexed. Uh, they were talking to the South Cactus Heights Association at the time, and. Uh, at the time they looked at the roads, they said there, there's no way we'd ever take you guys into the city unless you had a different access, uh, simply because of the severity of the slope. I, I, I'm sure some of you guys have been out there and made it. It's quite a quite a ride. After I know after I bought my house, I thought, what the heck was I thinking of, you know? But uh, uh, it, it's quite a hill. I mean, once you learn how to drive and and uh, uh, you know what weather to look out for, it's not bad. But as you add additional homes, additional traffic. Uh, you know, you, you need some kind of a safety point where you can pull off to the side or get out of harm's way. The city has annexed this into the city. I mean, based on that private road, I, I don't know if you've had any conversations with them lately, but we had uh, we'd met with uh, en city engineering, uh, to which they explained to us that there there's no standards for private road. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, apparently it can be you can. You can access it via private road, but uh, as we were told, there's no city standards for private road. It's a beautiful area out there. I, I know there's some beautiful homes out there. It's facing some growth, obviously. It, it would appear to me the association and this developer and whoever else is doing some things out there need to look at this road issue and in conjunction with the city and going, hey, how can we make this right? I don't know what the answer is, but. And I believe if I'm not mistaken, there are standards um, for private roads. Is that yeah, correct, Jeff? There are not standards in place? Right. Okay. Right. Right. Thanks, Mr. Dunlap. Hi, Jeff Schmidt, City Planning. Bob was correct. Um, this is an area that's developed over around the old golf course. Everybody knows the history out here, and the city has not been interested in wanting to come out here um, because it's very difficult to get utilities in here and to fix these existing roadways. Everything that we've talked about up to this point really go back to it's a private roadway owned by multiple people with their private liabilities, their private infrastructure, it's their private responsibilities. 
they take full and complete responsibility for that and the city doesn't need to get into those situations and we don't want to get in those situations. If they want to put houses on there, more power to them, but that's not our situation. It's a private road. It's, you know, when they're talking to you about fixing the road, it's their road. So. All right, thanks Jeff. Jeff, aren't we forcing traffic down that road we're, by we're not, on the second one? We're not forcing, no, we're not forcing it because. In and out of that area then. Mm -mm. It, it, it's their we're, roads. It's already. their road. They're, they're just saying we want access. We're like, well, you have a private road. It's, we're not forcing it. They could try to find another, or they don't, just like Kenny was his first question was, well, what if they can't get access there? Well, then they have to come up with another access point. Okay. But if they don't have an access point, then they don't get to develop. So we're not telling them they have to. Those maintenance agreements it's and their everything their decision. Else, they're part of that. Okay. that I just wanted to or... confirm that. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right. And again, it all comes back to there's no standards for private roads. Public roads, we would not do it this way. All right. So. Thanks. Any other questions for Jeff? All right. We'll take, take one more from the audience. Uh, my name is Merton Peterson at uh, East 62nd Street in Sioux Falls. Um, I guess that I'm a little taken aback this evening to hear the conversation about no standards for private roads. 22 years ago, we approached the city and wanted to plat part of the property that we owned. And we had to bring roads up to certain standards. We had to widen them. We had to put in some curb and gutter. We had to do a number of things in order to develop our property. Uh, more recently, the city entered into a pre-annexation agreement with what's called Caxas Heights South. And one of the requirements is, is that South Cactus Heights property shall improve all streets, sewer, water, and drainage services to adopted city engineering design standards. Those roads are private roads. So I'm, I guess I'm being told tonight that we can annex our property, develop it, and not have to improve our our roads in South Cactus Heights either, because we certainly want to be treated the same as this developer is being treated. If we've got to meet standards, he should have to meet standards. We don't expect anything more than that. Um, as to the, the plans, there's two parcels. The, the upper parcel that was discussed earlier, and I know we're beyond that, but um, there were certain drainage requirements for that, and much of that property drains to the north and it drains onto city property, and the requirements for drainage there said they had to take care of the drainage on site. This property drains to the south, finally reaching our property. They don't have to make any provisions on site for that. The, the first development adjacent to our property started in 1982, and we had a drainage problem and was solved in 2007. We've had a drainage problem with Canterbury Heights since 2005. I can't even get the city drainage people to tell me, it, it, they, didn't, they never did what they said they were gonna do. I can't get the city drainage people to look at it. I was promised last June, I was promised in August, I was promised in October and April that I'd hear from them. This new matter, I notified both the engineer and the chief drainage person in April and again earlier this month, and I get no response. Clearly, this developer is being treated differently than we were treated as developers, and, and what they told a group, another group of landowners that they had to do in order to be annexed into the city of Sioux Falls, that we had to upgrade private roads. And now we find out we don't have to upgrade private roads. I'd like a straight answer as to what really is going on. All right. Um, it, it's just wordplay. Um, when Mert read that, that's absolutely correct, but we put it all in one sentence. It says, you need to bring water, sewer, and roads up to standards. And what we're saying is there's no city standards for private roads. So you would have to bring your roads up to city standards, but what I was saying was there's no standards for private roads. There's water pipe standards, there's sanitary sewer standards, there's utility standards. There's just not a standard for a private road. So, Jeff, who, who does he 
this drainage engineering thing, I'm very empathetic to him. It's not what our, we're here to talk about, but. Right. It is, is preliminary it, subdivision plan and they meet the current drainage standards. Right, yep. but he's talking about getting somebody out there to take a look at that. Right. Who is that? Andy Berg and Chad Heavey, and he's, Mr. Peterson's talked to them both. So, okay. yep. Madam Chair. Yes. Jeff, straighten me out. When this new development starts, that's part yes. of the city, they're yep. annexed into the city. Yes. When that private road comes up to there, is that road now going to be built to city standards, and will that be a city street no. going up the rest of that way? No, because it's going to be a private road, and it will meet their private road issues. It's not going to be a city street. Won't be street lights. Won't be. No. Nope. Okay. Correct. But the but the water lines that they put in in this new development, and the water lines they put in South Cactus Heights will meet city standards. The sanitary sewer that they put in in this development and South Cactus Heights will meet city standards. But the private roads, we just. We just we have local street standards, we have collector street standards, we have arterial streets. We don't have private road standards because they're private roads. We just don't see it a lot. Right. I don't think. Thanks, Jeff. Could I speak one more, just a little bit further to that, mm -hmm. Madam Chair? One more comment, please. Uh, a, a further requirement of that pre-annexation agreement, it's just, it's another sentence. Once South Cactus Sites Homeowners Association is annexed in the city of Sioux Falls and the storm drainage evaluation is completed, South Cactus Sites neighborhood streets may continue to be privately maintained, except all private streets will be required to, to be improved in accordance with the most current edition of the city's engineering design standards. Evidently, there are engineering design standards for private streets, or that language clearly wouldn't be in the agreement. Now, I, I'm confused. I, Jeff is right. I read a sentence that talked about all things. But this one is very specific, and it says that those roads will be improved in accordance with the most current edition of the city's engineering design standards. My concern is that we're going to approve this, and then we're going to put standards on, and I'm going to have to meet those. The first 400 feet that Mr. Beckman or his buyers are going to be on are going to be on a road that we had to improve to city standards in 1993. There were standards then. Uh, it says there's standards, and now I'm told there aren't standards. I, 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 I'm really very confused. All right, commissioners, are there any questions? All right, seeing none, I think we'll we'll close this for discussion. I will look for a motion to approve item number eight for discussion purposes. So moved. And a second. Second. Final second. All right. Let's have some discussion. Mr. Chair, from what I can tell, I think we're talking about maybe seven lots total. Um, this is a private drive, private road that has been there forever. They have worked out whatever the issues are with regard to it. It's a preliminary subdivision plan to bring in seven more lots total. I think um, the drainage standards are what they are. They can't displace any more drainage than they currently can now. Those standards are, are well established within the city of Sioux Falls. Um, and if there are issues, then the city has uh, mechanisms in order to fix those. And uh, if they're not getting fixed in the south, that's, an, that's a separate issue. We're talking about this preliminary subdivision plan. Um, and I think absolutely, the developer has to commit to those drainage standards in order uh, to develop this piece of property. All right, thanks, Jesse. Any other comments? Uh, you know, I'm just struggling. It, it it seems like we're a land use committee, and and I that's our recommendation to the council. And I I sit and I go listen to everything we've heard about this disagreement with the road. Are we doing, is that a correct recommendation to exasperate, maybe that's not the word, the problem? Uh, I've been on the road. I, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous road. Uh, should that stop somebody from developing his land? You know, you make that argument, gee, you know, it is what it is. 
apparently he's got uh, ability to use the road, but are we creating more of a problem by agreeing to the land use? That's what I wrestle with. Uh, maybe it's just me. Well, and I guess from my perspective, uh, you know, when you look at the development of some additional uh, properties, uh, this is a good use uh, for this particular property. And perhaps what will happen, uh, big picture, thinking about city zoning and the direction things go as traffic increases, uh, they may decide as a private road, hey, let's start rebuilding pieces of this and we can slowly improve it over some time and actually improve the road itself to the point where it becomes more safe now that we have a few more people traveling over it. But keep in mind, this is not hundreds of cars a day. Uh, this, this isn't a real high level of use, even with seven additional properties onto this road. And I recognize there were some additional ones in that uh, previous one in number three we talked about, but that is still a relatively low number of cars coming across this particular road. I'm still confused. <laughs> um, I know item three is already over with, and they're building an access point, fire access down to this road. But now, and they can chain that off if they want to. But now we're putting another division, subdivision in that is actually forcing traffic down that road. They can't go anyplace else. They have no place else to go. Am I correct? Yeah, they've, they've got an access. That's, it's what's in that? the deed that they have access to that road. So they right. have use to that road. And that's something that they're going to have to, you know, get together and figure out how the maintenance of that road is going to work out. That's yeah. not for us to basically. And, and I understand that. Uh, again, like we're, we're land use. Um, can I honestly say that? You know, because I'm so confused that this is a good use for that land because of the access. I'm not, I'm not understanding what your question is, Steve. You're adding seven more lots to a subdivision to access a road that's existing. A private road. Yep. That they have access to. It just comes down to them. They have to figure out a maintenance agreement right. to basically improve that road. That's ultimately what they're going to have to do. And that's going to be something that they have to decide. All right. Any other comments? We have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Yes. All right. The motion passes. Item 9 is an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the revised ordinances of the city by revising planning and zoning application fees. Uh, Jason Beaver, planning staff. Uh, this is a petition by the planning staff to amend fees for various planning commission applications and adding one new application fee uh, to the ordinance. Uh, as you had received the staff reports and the specific ordinances, sections 1 through 7 and 9 through 11 represent a fee increase for certain applications for planning commission. Uh, some are t between $25 and $75. Uh, and then section 8 is a new application, um, alternative site plans that was um, allowed with the new Shape Places zoning ordinance. We're adding that into the fee section. And I'll entertain any questions you guys may have. Any questions, commissioners? All right, thanks, Jason. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to um, address item number nine? All right, seeing none, I'd like to have a motion to approve. So we'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, item number nine passes. Let's move on to item number 10. Item 10 is an ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the code of ordinances of the city 
by amending Chapter 160, Zoning, Subchapter Fees. Uh, Jason Bieber, Planning Staff. Uh, this is a similar request um, from the Zoning Department to amend uh, their Board of Adjustment fees, I believe, to, from $75 to $100. And then also one of their permit fees for a fence permit, which is $17 to $20 to get it more even so we're not making change all the time for people that pay in cash. Thanks. Any questions for Jason? All right. Anyone in the audience that would like to address item number 10? Seeing none, I'd like a motion to approve. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right. Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 So yes. The same sign. All right. Motion passes. Item 11 is a 2014-0520 rezone from the RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential and the RS Single Family Residential District to the RA1 Apartment Residential District, RD2 Townhome Residential District for allowed forms located at north of East 69th Street and west of South Southeastern Avenue. Uh, Jason Bieber again with the planning staff. Uh, this is an application by Brady Hyde uh, to rezone uh, 20, 25.8 acres to the RD townhome residential suburban and the RA1 apartment residential low density to construct a multifamily residential development. It is located, as Denise said, north of East 69th Street, west of Southeastern Avenue and east of those existing railroad tracks. Uh, the proposed development will have access to the future South Tanner Avenue, which will be a collector running through there. Uh, a school is located about a half mile away. That would be the Sioux Falls Christian School. And I know some of the neighbors' concerns were a playground for this spe specific development. The applicant has indicated that he will put an on-site playground for his proposed development for the kids. Um, another one of their major issues is, is drainage. Um, when we get along to the development phase. And if, Diane, if you can go one more, please. Uh, this is, uh, we've been working closely with the engineering department, and this is from the drainage engineers showing the existing drainage for the Whisper Ridge development to the north where many of the neighbors with concerns live. As you can see, the existing twin home lots on the south side of them, there's that uh, bright green line. Um, that is their existing sump pump collector, um, and that's all moving to the east. Their existing uh, detention pond in the center of the development, water drains into that and collects, and then it, start, it discharges to the south, as you can see, and then finally goes east, underneath Southeastern Avenue, over to the existing drainage channel on the east side. Uh, this particular development will follow the same path. The specific twin homes that are gonna abut up to these existing twin homes We'll have the standard 10-foot utility drainage easement in the back to run the water to the east over to that um, proposed detention pond with the CN zoning and then eventually discharging it to the east, similar to how the existing neighborhood works. Uh, the proposed RA1 and RD2 zoning districts are in compliance with the Shape Sioux Falls Comprehensive Plan. Further, a proper land use transition will exist from the existing C2 commercial neighborhood and streetcar, RA2 apartment residential moderate density, and the old office districts to the east, and the proposed RA3 apartment residential high density to the south. Uh, land use transitions will continue from the proposed RA1 apartment residential low density uh, and the RD2 townhome residential as you head north to the existing RD2 townhome residential zoning of the Whisper Ridge development. Uh, normally, the proposed RD2 would be a highly compatible with the existing RD2 zoning of that Whisper Ridge development. However, numerous twin homes were constructed within the Whisper Ridge and adjacent to the proposed Emerald Valley rezoning. Staff feels that a minimum of a one row of twin homes or duplex uses running along the entire length of the north property line would provide an efficient land use transition to the existing twin homes within the Whisper Ridge development. Uh, further, Several of the neighbors have requested um, additional buffering. Um, staff has worked with the, the developer, and we believe that the developer is going to provide two additional trees per twin home lot on the rear of those lots to help with some more buffering between those existing twin home lots. Because the subject application is consistent with the Shape Sioux Falls Comprehensive Plan and the proper land use transition is stated as stated in Shape Sioux Falls will exist, 
with a below condition, staff recommends approval of the rezoning with the following condition. A minimum of one row of lots utilizing the AD1 form, which is twin home or duplex uses, are required along the entire length of the north property line. And I'll be happy to entertain any questions you may have. Any questions, commissioners? All right, seeing on. thank you, Jason. Is the applicant here? <coughs> Hello, I'm Brady Hyde with Empire Homes. All right, hi Brady, do you have anything to add? Not really, Jason covered it pretty well. Um, we did have a neighborhood meeting, I wanna say two Mondays ago. Um, good turnout, 30 or 35 folks. Uh, Councilman Kiley was there. And uh, we came up with just that exhibit there, uh, where we agreed to do the uh, twin homes, backing up to the twin homes. And uh, I think for the most part, the neighbor, the neighbors were, um, if not content, they were uh, not happy, they were content. So um, that's really all I have to add. All right, thanks. Any questions, commissioners? Brady, as it relates to the additional buffering of trees, um, again, this is a rezone, and we'll talk about that again at a preliminary subdivision plan. But is that amenable to you at this point? I, I didn't catch the first part, I'm sorry. With the additional buffering of yeah. The trees? Yeah, we're fine with putting uh, two trees per twin home in the rear yards. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. All right, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address this item? I will. All right, please come forward. State your name and address, please. Oh, my name is Mary Triber, 2622 East Whisper Trail. And uh, I am reading the following testimony provided by John Martin. Mr. Martin is currently in the hospital, so he's unable to be here. So I uh, kind of consented to go ahead. And I think the ladies and gentlemen both have copies, or all have copies of what I'm going to be reading. And actually, ma'am, I think we have had time, um, commissioners, have you had time to read through this document? Oh. Okay. 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 So I, I think they have. So we don't. I don't need to go through it again. I, I okay. think the commissioners have had time to read it, so we appreciate that. Okay. And, um, okay. Okay. That's fine. Uh, that's fine then. Did you have? And anything you got to the bottom of the analysis is correct. More substantial mitigation would be required before this rezone is approved. Okay. Got okay. that too. Do you have anything else to add, though? Okay. No, I don't have anything else at this time. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Do you have any questions? All right, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address this item? All right, please come forward. My name is Larry Sorensen, 2703 East Whisper Trail. And even though uh, they showed the drainage tonight, my primary, primary concern still is with the drainage uh, that will come with the rezoning and development of this area. Even with moderate rains, we have a lot of water that drains from west to east behind our properties. There's a lot of natural wetlands and ponds that retain much of that water. Now, my understanding is they're gonna be filling up all those holes and wetlands. And my question is, what assurance can you give us that Tanner Street, when it's built, will not be to Whisper Ridge what Highway 11 has been to Schindler? And that's the question that I think needs to be addressed uh, greatly. And uh, I guess another concern I have is that uh, uh, four of our neighbors met with the planning services on June 30th, or excuse me, June 20th, and they left the meeting feeling that uh, a lot of progress had been made, and then later they received a phone call and said, well, forget it, you know. I guess the developer didn't want to go along with suggestions. So I guess I'm just uh, asking that uh, hopefully you people represent the citizens of Sioux Falls. I know you're responsible to the council and the mayor and, uh, and they're in turn responsible to the citizens. So I, I just would like to request fairness to the citizens of Sioux Falls. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Any questions? For Larry? Uh, just a quick question then. When you said you had a meeting and you thought great progress was made and then you got a phone call saying... The, uh, the I wasn't said, at no. the meeting, but four of our neighbors met uh, and maybe one of the people that was at that meeting could address that. 
is there someone here that would? My, my point with asking that question, it sounded like from Jason's comments earlier, there was a lot of things that had changed from the printed documents that we had here in terms of a playground, uh, buffer trees, and, and such like that. So I just want to make sure I understand yeah. what well, you I, all talked about that was appe not appeasing might not be the right word, but you, you felt more comfortable, but then it all went away. After the meeting and supposedly uh, one of them received a phone call and said, well, nothing doing. That was my understanding I had. And just trying to understand the context of what was happening and then was taken away is what I want to understand. Yeah, and that was a little disturbing to everyone. Well, fair enough, but yeah. what? What is it? What is it that well, was being said and, and then was taken away? Is there away? someone that was at that meeting that can address that? I wasn't at the meeting, so. Rosemary Murphy, uh, 2627 East Whisper Trail. I have kind of documented this and I'd just like to read it to you, so. I was a part of a small group of concerned homeowners of Whisper Ridge invited to meet with Mr. Cooper and Mr. Bieber on 6-2014. While we very much appreciated the fact that a row of twin homes directly behind us was a specification by the planning committee, we also asked them to consider some type of buffering as a specification between our existing property and the proposed signature twin homes. We were surprised and very disappointed to learn this week that there was no consideration to do this. Mr. Cooper had indicated to us that he felt this was a reasonable request and it was our understanding this would be proposed as a specification to the planning committee, but apparently this was not done. But we did leave the meeting that day feeling very good about it and that Mr. Cooper felt that our request was reasonable, that we wanted some type of buffering between the twin homes that they're going to build, which we very much appreciated them building twin homes right directly behind us, and the next row of, of twin homes between our development and their development. And now I understand they're talking about some trees. I guess what we had talked to him about was a little more than just a few trees and that the homeowners would maybe on either side could also plant trees there if they so desired. So that's kind of... And that's... Who, who said you couldn't do that? Well, uh, John, who's not here tonight, who's in the hospital, got a call from Mr. Bieber saying it was a no. I won't repeat exactly what was said, but it was a no. Well, well what we kind just of heard buffering? Yeah. that there would be no buffering. Well, what kind of buffering are we talking about? Well, we were talking about some buffering with maybe some landscaping. Yeah. You know, I don't know what, if you call it a buffering, a greenway or whatever okay. the term is. So I heard correctly earlier, the developer state he wanted to put two trees per twin home on their on the back side of their property so line. Is that just a tree on between right at the where the two lots join? Is that it'd be just two trees that basically would, you know, back up to the property line. I guess what we were talking about was a little you know, we didn't get into how many feet, but it was a little bit of of a uh I don't know what you, if you want to call it a greenway, a berm, a whatever. Some type of something that kind of differentiated more our development from the proposed development, so. All right, thank you. Any other questions, commissioners? Hi, my name is Tim Stenberg. I'm at 5024 South Borough here in Sioux Falls. Thanks for being here tonight, so close to a holiday. Uh, I represent the Whisper Ridge Homeowners Association, which is made up of 57 different homeowners, several of which are here tonight. Um, I'm also the developer of the 68 acres called Whisper Ridge. And uh, what I want to talk to you about tonight is zoning matters. Um, the reason we have shaped places is because we all felt, and the city felt, and everyone involved in the process felt zoning matters. And these homeowners made purchasing decisions based on existing zoning. 
that existing zoning you see up there in the big yellow. In the middle was RS. Uh, well, it was different prior to shape places, but it's single family. It's RS. And the reason we're here tonight, and the reason this has unfolded, just to give everyone a quick uh, history, is that uh, we've been introduced to cascade zoning. And what I mean by that is a month ago, another developer came in in that piece along 69th where you, it's yellow and you see the uh, line. They rezoned that from single family to um, RA3 allowing three-story, 128-unit apartment complexes. So we went from single-family to RA3. Now, do we care about that? It's along 69th, I kind of understand. We'll accept it. But because of that decision, we're now cascading the zoning and the density up to Whisper Ridge. So north of that, what we're doing is we're rezoning it to RA2, allowing up to 48 units, three stories high. And because of that, we're going into um, RD2, and the concern with the homeowners is density. One thing we haven't talked about tonight, and I'm talking about land use, and when you rezone it, we're talking about density. And what didn't come up is we're talking four plexes, eight plexes, and then one row of twin homes. We asked the developers at the meeting, what is the density? What's it gonna be? How many units? Do you have a site plan? No. And I feel that it's gonna be slammed with a ton of four plexes, a ton of eight plexes, and the homeowners, what they're concerned about is, unfortunately, due to the new shape places ordinance, there are no sub-area regs. There are no required amenities. So as a commission, you're gonna face this in the future. Are there playgrounds? Are there walking trails? Are there gazebos? Things at Whisper Ridge, we were required as a PUD. Now with shape places, you don't have to have any of that. So. It's unfortunate for Sioux Falls, and it's unfortunate for the neighborhood where these pe where people are going to end up calling home. It's also unfortunate for adjacent neighborhoods that have those amenities, and the neighborhoods around will g kids go to our neighborhood and use our amenities. So, in uh, just to to conclude, uh, what the neighbors were talking about, what they're very interested in, in the meeting they had with uh, planning, Mr. Bieber, Mr. Cooper, was uh, to add stipulations. Uh, one of which is the row of twin homes which is done, secondly would be to add amenities. It's great, and, and I've worked with developers, they're good people, but we'd like to add those as stipulations so we make sure when the final product is built that there are two trees per twin home. There are, when they're talking buffering, they're talking about additional feet. They just, because of, they know the density is gonna be there, they want to be a little bit further away. So with that, I will uh, entertain any question from the commission. Madam Chair. Yes. Do you have anything uh, as far as suggestions for stipulations that you could share with this co co commission in yeah, writing? The, yeah, based on the uh, comments that I've received from the homeowners, uh, and uh, I can tell you that all uh, 57 were opposed to a rezone. I don't want to leave anyone here with the feeling of contentment. Uh, I have not met anyone in the 57 uh, group of homeowners that or was in favor of rezoning. But to answer your question, uh, Mr. Pearson, uh, one was a row of twin homes, which I believe has been added as a stipulation. Secondly would be two trees planted uh, per twin home. And third would be uh, some type of a uh, recreational area for the four plexes and eight plexes, somewhere within there. And how the planning staff comes up with the recreational area, it used to be defined as gazebos and, and uh, court that's what we put in our development uh, and the uh, fourth thing would be additional feet between uh, the north border and their north border and our south border those would be, be the four really how many feet uh, we, we felt that 15 would be sufficient Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. All right, is there anyone else from the audience that would like to address this item? We'll take one more, please. Joe Matichek, 2621 Whisper Trail. Um, I look at it a little different in the sense that zoning and planning and all that and rezoning is something that is to develop a consistency and conformity. 
And when you start moving in and make dramatic changes, you're changing the outlook of the people that are already in place. From, and I'm relatively new to Sioux Falls in the sense I've only been here 25 years. But you look around and you see developments coming up with massive amounts of apartment buildings, but they're set aside. They're not in close. People that choose to build close to them choose to build. They don't get forced into building there or forced into putting up with it. And I think we need to look at it from that standpoint. We're being forced by something that has changed. And Sioux Falls is growing. We know that. We accept it probably why we're here. And I guess we have to look at it from that viewpoint, in my opinion. Right. And my wife is not here because she's sick. <laughs> But uh, she pretty much goes along with that. If you have any questions, I would gladly uh, Any questions, commissioners? Nope, seeing none, thank you. All right, I think we'll close. Oh, all right, come on up. One more. I don't mind adding a few more things. Um, the land to the north of these twin homes across the street, currently eight, and I'm not sure if they're 16, but they're currently eight plexes directly to the north. And so, we feel by promising twin homes versus even, which is a lesser use in the eight plexes across the street from these twin homes, that we've conceded greatly where the R2 designation would allow four plexes, eight plexes, things such as that. Um, also regarding the, uh, the touch on the, the rezoning several times, I'm not sure, Jason would probably be better to answer this, but I'm assuming the land that they, of which they built their twin homes on was rezoned a couple times from its original designation as well. So. I guess what I'm, I'm pointing out that the land that your guys is currently, your twin homes are currently built on, was probably rezoned several times as well. And so the, the, uh, the counter that you bought next to single family, and it should always stay single family, isn't 100% valid as land is continually changing, the zones are continually changing. And then I also just discussed across the street to the north, there was eight plexes, and we've agreed to go with twin homes. And we've also agreed to do the, the uh, playground. We're completely fine with that. We'll have our own playground. We've also agreed to provide the trees. Uh, the one thing we are completely opposed is the additional buffering. Uh, we're not asking for anything more than what their lot depth is, which is 120 feet. And that's what our lot depth will be, is 120 feet. Um, as far as the discussion of berms, putting berms in a, you know, if they're concerned about drainage, putting berms in that drainage is not ideal. That would cause more problems than resolution. So we are opposed to berms, as that would cause issues for drainage flowing from the west to the east. And we are opposed to the 15 feet of additional depth of our lots, as we just want, we just want what they have, 120 foot of depth. And that's, that's all we're asking for. So we believe that's fair. That's all I have. One Any quick, questions? One quick comment. Yeah. When you're saying eight plexes across the street, are you talking about the properties that are just to the north of your? Yes, I'm sorry. Yep. OK. OK. Uh, Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. I would look for a motion to approve for discussion purposes. Uh, so, so moved. moved. And second. We have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? All right. Um, oh, all right. Well, I'm just going to. I think we do add, need to add the other stipulation with the two trees just to confirm that. I know he's agreed to it, but. Uh, that would make the, uh, um, for this way, I just feel that we should have that, that stipulation on there also. Uh, he's agreed to it. Uh, uh, just as begin. a clarification, um, in the new Shape Places zoning ordinance, it does give the ability to put conditions on rezonings, but there's only a certain things that you can put conditions on. Um, an example is, is, uh, is requiring a row of twin homes putting things like trees and playground equipment, that's not allowed to be put on as conditions. And that's why we've worked with the developer and he's agreed to do it. And that's why we haven't put it on the staff report as conditions. So he's agreed to do it. So we're taking him at his word that he's gonna provide those amenities and the additional trees. Thank you, we're learning. Yeah. Jason, is that an option at the preliminary subdivision? No, not for the preliminary subdivision plan. The, you know, back, I don't even, the old ordinance, I don't know how you would put conditions on there unless they had a conditional use permit for, for those kind of things. Couldn't um, put conditions on a rezone. 
in back it. back in the old ordinance either. Um, but like I said, we've worked with them and and they've agreed to do it, and they've given us no indication that they're not going to do it. So. All right. Thank you. You said we learn, <laughs> Madam Chair. We're learning. Um, the motion, did it include uh, the minimum of one row of um, the twin homes as the uh, part of that motion? Because I believe that uh, although this has been agreed to, that should probably be made as part of that motion unless it's already are you guys opposed to that or should we do it as an amendment? Or sure, we can, we can do sure it as an amendment. I think, let's just ask, was that stipulation as part of your motion to approve? I would be fine with that. I just moved against the. So the initial motion against. to approve was with the stipulation. Mm -hmm. All right. I read it as it was in the yep. in the that plan. It was worded on there. All okay. right. Betty, but okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure that. Nope, that that's was good addressed. clarification. So we do have a motion to approve and a second with the stipulation that has been stated on the item number eleven. All in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, the motion passes. Thank you. Item 12 is a 2014-06-02 rezone from the AG Agricultural District to the RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential Suburban for allowed forms located at 50 North Knoll Drive. This project might be a little familiar. Diane with planning staff. Uh, the project before you is a request to rezone 9.29 acres from the AG Agriculture District to the RD1 Twin Home Duplex Residential District. The owners in this case could, all, could build single family and twin homes at this location. The subject property is located in Cactus Heights, north of East Madison Street and south of Great Bear for general vicinity. The applicant is Scott Gilbert and Pat Beckman with North Star Development proposing to rezone for single family and twin homes. There are rural residential homes that are outside of Cindy limits to the south of the proposed rezone. Additionally, there are RD1 lots located approximately a quarter mile to the south. Planning staff feels the rezone is generally compatible with the adjacent developments. The applicant has met with the neighbors, as we've heard previously, um, to review concerns about the existing road into the development and maintenance of that road. Um, the owner is also providing that secondary access for emergency vehicles. Uh, the applicant and neighbors are continuing discussions regarding items that could be included in a homeowners association agreement and covenants for the new lots. Uh, because the subject application is consistent with the Shape Sioux Falls comprehensive plan and is generally compatible with the surrounding area, staff recommends approval of the rezone. All right, thank you, Diane. Does anyone have any questions for Diane? All right, thank you. Is the applicant here? Pat Beckman, 1601 East 69th Street. Uh, we're asking for single and twin home designation in this area. Uh, they're pretty good sized lots the way we have them laid out at the present time. Smallest one I believe is just over a half acre and they go up from there. And so that was the reason we had a twin home in there. There's, a, there's some desires of people to be out, we think to be out in this area. Uh, majority of the people that would have a twin home are going to be probably a husband and wife or maybe just a single individual uh, professional is what we're finding around the city. So we left it, we requested it so that we could have a, the option of whoever would come in looking for a lot. These homeowners would be required to join the homeowners association to help pay for the uh, maintenance of the road and then they would if there was a couple of next door to each other why maybe they would have their own homeowners owners association just to take care of their lot snow removal and grass on those individual lots these right. will be on city sewer and water thanks pat any questions for pat all right thank you is there anyone in the audience that would like to 
come forward. Uh, I'm Merton Peterson from Sioux Falls. A uh, couple things, uh, and I know that we've passed item eight, but as we discussed item eight, we talked about only six more lots. Well, six more lots, but times two is 12 more homeowners, so we go back to the issue of the problem with, with, with traffic, and we think it's too dense. Uh, that, that road wasn't made that way. Uh, the second thing is, is that I understand in, in, the, in the staff reports, and I don't have it, I, I, it talks about a transition. And what you're transitioning from is uh, at the very southeast corner of Cactus Heights, what's commonly known as Cactus Heights, it's the old American Legion property, there's an eightplex. And there's gonna be some more fourplexes there. But from Fairway Drive to the north, and probably at least a quarter mile wide, you have single family, deep ravines, a number of trees, you're gonna drop in twin homes or duplexes, and then to the northeast, in the east, in the north, and probably the west, you're gonna have single family. So it's not a transition. You're dropping twin homes, duplexes, right in the middle of a single family area. Now, you know, it, 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 maybe it's appropriate, but that, that isn't what we talked about when we said it's only six more lots, and it isn't a transition. You're dropping twin homes into a single family area. All right, thank you. Are there, are there any questions, commissioners? All right, thank you. Gary Hyatt, uh, 30 North Marker. Uh, first of all, there are no twin homes or duplexes uh, within a half mile of this property, which is incorrectly stated in the staff report of a quarter mile. It's a half a mile. You know, there's a lot of good comments earlier about you know that we can upgrade our roads and things like that we spent twenty thousand dollars last year it takes us a long time with 14 homes to come up with twenty thousand dollars to do to do repairs in addition to the snow removal and whatnot and there was also a lot of comments about the you know well it's only six more lots and it's only you know six more you know homes and now we're going to talking about doubling it uh, you know, that's going to triple the traffic on our 11 and a half foot road that is, as you saw by the photos, is unsafe. Uh, the, prim the preliminary subdivision plan also submitted uh, here does not indicate that our road width is 11 and a half foot, which is required, and that's not listed. The plan here for the road is to continue to be maintained privately by us, which you know, we're not real excited to be able to have to continue to do that uh, with the additional uh, traffic that uh, for, you know, 12 families uh, could provide. Uh, that's all I got. Any questions? All right. Any questions? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. Bob Getz, 43 North Cactus Drive. Um, I guess I'd like to echo the same concerns uh, where the conversation's been that a good transition. Again, our six homes are at the end of the road. There's no transition. We're, we are an island. And uh, by putting those twin homes up there, uh, you're going to create their own island. You've got rural residents to the south, uh, just recommended rezoning uh, single family homes to the northeast, single family homes to the uh, straight east of that. And, and based on what we've seen with the uh, proposed development straight north of this property, uh, those will be large lots, probably executive style homes. And, and we just feel that with, with uh, twin homes, uh, not only are we gonna triple the uh, uh, traffic on our road, but it's also gonna have an adverse effect on the value of our where we have larger homes, larger lots, and then we'll have twin homes adjacent to us. And uh, we would ask for your consideration that we, we help maintain uh, what's already been developed there instead of changing uh, the, the building style and the, the type of lots and homes that will be in that area. So, All right. You, thank you. Any, you. Are there any you. questions? All right. Seeing none, thank you. All right. I'd like to make a 
would like to have a motion to approve for discussion. So moved. And a second. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Discussion? Well, I can see the point of uh, the last few comments about uh, having duplexes in the midst of what appears to be primarily single family, large lots. Um, I, I can really empathize with that. Um, and the fact that this is quite a ways away from any other uh, duplex type facilities or whether it's fourplex or eightplex, whatever. Um, and I think in general, as I look at it, I, I am opposed uh, to making that shift myself. Thank you. Any other comments? Well, it's a tough one, isn't it? Uh, all the testimony we've had tonight about that darn road. I wish there was an easy way to solve that, but I, I just don't see it. Madam Chair, I'm inclined to agree with uh, Commissioner Irvin. It is troublesome, troubling that uh, people who have planned their lives, built their homes, uh, can't rely necessarily on anything to maintain what they've invested in. So I'm with uh, Commissioner Irvin, and I will oppose this. All right, any other comments? I'll continue to echo what's already been said uh, with these lot sizes. I, I'm not seeing a good fit for twin homes or more dense than that. It doesn't seem to be an appropriate fit. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying yes. All opposed, same sign? Yes. yes. All right. Item 13 is a 2014-06-08 conditional use permit in the DD2 form to allow a bed and breakfast located at 804 South Phillips Avenue. Um, Jenny Trzeski, planning staff. The applicant is Karen A. Johnson, and she's uh, requesting a, a conditional use permit to convert her single family home into a bed and breakfast. Um, it is located at 804 South Phillips Avenue, which is south of Lion Park. Uh, the site plan provided appears to comply with conditional use permit standards for a bed and breakfast, um, including being over 1,800 square feet. Uh, the house in total is 2,573 square feet. Um, and the off street parking requirements should be one half space per guest room, which the site seems to uh, meet with a, either a two car garage or a um, parking pad in the back. Uh, because this, the application for the existing land use is compatible with the surrounding areas, staff recommends approval for the conditional use permit with the above noted conditions A through H. All right, thank you. Any questions? Hey, right, thanks. Is the applicant here? Hello, Karen Johnson, 804 South Phillips Avenue. I bought this house seven years ago and spent most of the last six years stripping all of the white paint off of the oak woodwork and <laughs> returning the house to its original glory. During that same time, my kids moved to Florida, my mother went to assisted living, and I find that my house has outgrown me. But I also can't go anywhere without people saying, I would love to see the inside of your house. So I've been thinking about ways that I could share this gem and came up with this idea for a bed and breakfast. So. Great, thank you. Are there any questions? Madam Chair, how many uh, rooms or People can you accommodate? There are currently four bedrooms in the home, so I would go for three guest rooms. What are you serving? <laughs> I thought Scandinavian. Maybe eggs and salmon, and I don't know. Yeah. Were you going to move in there, Denny? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I haven't been in the doghouse yet. But <laughs> <laughs> Karen, I've long been an admirer of this home. It wow. is on my daily commute, and um, I had cousins that grew up across the street from this house and uh, so I'm familiar with it most of my life and it's been 
very pleasing to see the work that you have done over the last several years. So yep. nice to see the pictures of the inside. All right, thank you. Are, is there anyone in the audience that would like to address this item? Good evening. George Hamilton, uh, 814 South Main, 819 South Main, 815 South Main, 208 West 17th, 214 West 17th. Uh, as a member of the All Saints neighborhood, uh, this would be a welcomed uh, addition to our neighborhood as our neighborhood has been transitioning. Uh, some of you are familiar with the work that I've done on Maine. Uh, most notably lately, we moved the house from 619 South Maine, which was next to First Dakota Title, the big house with the columns, restored that to a, a southern location on Maine. So any improvements that have been done, and Karen has put a lot of time, energy, and money into her property, as we have, so we welcome the addition of a bread and breakfast because we already get the uh, Christmas parade that comes through the neighborhood. We get the Battle of the Bands. Uh, we get the symphony that plays for all saints in the summertime and everything. So there's a lot of things in our neighborhood that people walk. You know, we have children. It's a family-friendly neighborhood. So it is that we would like to see this uh, request approved. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you coming down. It's nice to have people <laughs> come down and support. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address this item? Bethel Shoot, 2301 South Glendale Avenue. Um, I was probably don't even need an answer for this one, but I was kind of disappointed that the permit was right on the corner of 802's property as opposed to being dead centered for 804's. And I don't know if you have an answer for me. I just wanted to make the comment. The place is beautiful. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I understood the question. Je Jeff, could you come forward, please? Or Jason? Excuse me. Sorry, I thought you were moving that way. <laughs> uh, Jason Beaver, planning staff. I think, I believe what she's indicating is the postings, required postings, and which we do have to put on the four corners of the property. Oh, okay. um, and I think that's maybe what she's indicating, the blue signs. Okay. So yep, they're required to be put on the, on, the, on the four corners of the property, so they would be on the very edge between the two. All right. Does that answer your question, ma'am? Yes. Excuse me. Yes, it pretty much does. It's just that 802's property ends here. Here's the driveway, and here's 804. And so it looks like it's 802 that's getting the B and B. Okay. <laughs> you know, thank you. you don't want. Well, unless you read the fine print, you haven't a clue. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. If there's no one else in the audience that has any comments, I'd like to have a motion to approve for discussion. Don't move. All right, second. 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 All right, any discussion? Just real quick, um, I was reading through this, and the conditional use, is it assumed that it is just for this owner? No. No? It is not. Conditional uses go with the property. Okay. So, um, there are land use decision, and the conditional use is a conditional use for this property. This property then can have a bed and breakfast as long as it continues to meet those conditions. Very good. Thanks, Jeff. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, motion passes. Item 14 is a 2014-0609 initial development plan for the Sanford Medical and Educational Complex plan unit development located west of South Ellis Road and north of West Lancaster Drive. Madam Chair, I will excuse myself for this item. All right, thank you. Diane DeCoyer with planning staff. The project before you is an initial development plan for Sanford Medical Center and an elementary school for the T School District. The applicant is Paul Korn with Sayer Associates and Bob Winkles with Sanford Medical Center. The subject property is 21.34 acres located west of South Ellis Road and north of Lancaster Drive. The property was originally zoned as a part of the Westwood Valley Plan Development District under the revised 1983 zoning ordinance. With the passing of Shape Places zoning ordinance and 
ordinance and it becoming effective in April of this year, the 21.34 acres were zoned S2 Institutional Campus, PUD. An initial development plan is required to be approved by the Planning Commission before construction can begin. The proposed plan indicates a one-section elementary school on the west 9.63 acres of the parcel. The plan indicates a 30,000 square foot building, playground parking, bus loop, and service drive. Located to the east of the school are three one to two story medical support buildings. Adjacent to the east is a larger 150 to 300,000 square foot medical building. The petitioner has provided all the required elements for review for their initial development plan. On submission, on submission of the individual school and medical buildings, planning staff will review for conformance of the respective final development plans. Any initial development plan standards that are not met in the final development plan <coughs> will also require an amendment to an initial development plan. A proper <coughs> land use transition exists from the existing RS single family residential to the west, the YMCA wellness center to the north, and a pedestrian oriented PUD to the east. Property to the south is used for agriculture and not currently within the Sioux Falls city limits. Because the proposed S2 zoning district is in compliance with the Shape Sioux Falls comprehensive plan, staff recommends approval of the initial development plan. I can answer any questions you might have. Any questions? All right, seeing none, thank you, Diane. Is the applicant here? I'm Bob Winkles, a VP of Design and Construction for Sanford Health, 2301 East 60th Street North. Uh, what you see um, on the east side there is uh, a, a very conceptual idea of what we might do with that. There's nothing eminent that we're pursuing right now, but the western uh, half of that site, uh, mostly represented in green there, uh, would be what the T School District would be pursuing now. It's all part of our PUD. So I'll, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have of us as the uh, you know, applicant, but we've got the architect here uh, and the civil engineer on behalf of the school district and other representatives of the school district here too and certainly uh, open to questions. Any questions, commissioners? All right, seeing none, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address this item? Chad Zortman, 8904 West Normal Trail. Uh, I represent a group that has been opposed to development of this property, uh, known as the Westwood Valley Neighborhood Association. Um, we've kind of been taken aback because this has been something that's sprung upon us as far as the zoning S2. Um, I don't know if you have the documentation for S2 requirements. I have copies if you'd like it. I, I don't think that's necessary, sir. OK. Um, if you read the S2 requirements, it says the last line, the S2 planned unit development requires an initial development plan with significant community involvement in the development, monitoring, implementation, and amendment, including neighborhood meetings before initial development plans are approved or amendment. No meetings have been scheduled with anybody in our neighborhood. Sanford has not followed the rules for an S2. I would ask for this group to issue a 30-day deferment for this item, for Sanford to play by the rules and have a meeting with neighbors to discuss this item. Thank you. Are there any questions? All right, seeing none, thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address this? Uh, Nathan Burdine, 2609 South Kira Court, live across the street from the proposed development and just want to um, wholeheartedly support uh, the idea for the development. We've been talking to uh, the T School District and to Sanford. We've taken it upon ourselves to call them and ask questions 
um, applaud all of the plans and, and think it'd be a welcome um, addition to our neighborhood. It's a big reason we moved out there, the possibility of having a school in our neighborhood. I think schools are good for, for, for everybody. And uh, so just uh, support, the, uh, support the plan as it is. All right, thank you. Jolene Letcher, 2609 South Kiara Court, um, and as well would just say that we are very supportive of what Sanford has been doing as well as the Tiaria School District. Thank you. All right, thank you. Leroy Robinson, 2313 South Katy Avenue. My biggest concern, and I've voiced this to the T School District and it didn't really get me anywhere, is, and you can't really see it on the diagram, but on the back side of this, there's a pond that is like 16 feet deep on one end, 14 feet deep on the other. My concern is how are the children that are supposed to attend this school going to be kept safe from this pond when most of them are going to have to walk either around it or come wintertime when it freezes over, how many of them are going to try to cross it? We all did it, you know. Then when something happens, who's liable for it then? Is the T school district gonna be liable for the loss of somebody's child? Is the city of Sioux Falls gonna be liable for it? Is Sanford gonna be liable for it? Somebody needs to think about what's gonna to happen to the kids. You're building an elementary school near some place that they can really get hurt. I mean, I don't think of any other school in Sioux Falls that's built next to a big pond. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any comments or questions? All right. Seeing I appreciate you. your concerns. All right. With that, I'd like to have a motion to approve for discussion. So moved. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Discussion, please. I'm a bit curious about the comments that if, if there is supposed to be a mandatory neighborhood meeting of some magnitude, has that, did that really not occur or was there not proper Would you like to have notification or, or, or? I'm Jennifer Lowry. I'm the superintendent of the T area school district. Um, there's been public meetings with notices August 28th, when all of these projects began. August 28th, there was a meeting in the elementary school in T, um, which Mr. Zortman had attended, who had spoke earlier. At the Family Wellness Center, located in the area just to the north, there was a meeting held on September 5th, 2013, at 7.30 that evening. There was an additional meeting held September 10th at the elementary school in T for um, public questions and information. On December 6th, there was a um, open house for board members, community members to come and ask questions. Um, the engineer, the architect, the developers were there. The um, board then held open meetings prior to the third bond issue that did not include the North Elementary, but had talked about um, capital outlay certificates and those pieces, and those meetings were held in March. There were three of those. March 25th, um, April 14th, and then June 9th, um, President Hare also took comments from the public during open meetings. All right, thank you. Thank you. There uh, design input and feedback offered during those meetings as well? The design was shared. The questions were taken and answered. Um, there have been some modifications to the plan and listened to concerns. Okay, thank you. Other questions? All right, no, thank you though. Thank you. All right, we'll take one more comment, please. I thought we were already closed. We should have been taking that. 
If I'm not mistaken, I believe Sanford is the applicant for this item. Sanford is responsible for the meetings. Um, we were never we were never notified of such meetings. No meetings were posted within our neighborhood. We were ne never received a flyer, a mailer. Nothing was posted in our neighborhood whatsoever. We found out about such meetings by word of mouth. So they had meetings to inform people of the bond issue, but they did not have meetings to inform people of their initial plans. All right, thank you for your comment. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the item um, at this time. All in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, the motion passes. And with that, I would take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you.